Hi guys, we're yeah, currently here the with the, the okay. Sutton family and I'm friends. Cool down, <laughs> Hi guys. Hi. <laughs> and we're just at the river in South Westland gearing up for a two day adventure fishing trip. And the sun's come out. We got a bit of rain in the river last night. The river's looking very grey and silty. Can't actually see the river, it's over there behind those trees. But we're hoping that the side creeks are going to be crystal clear and there's going to be heaps of fish and the rapids are going to be not too big. We jump into the helicopter, fly 44 kilometres into the wilderness area of Mount Aspiring National Park. And while the helicopter's going to pick up the rest of the crew, we catch a few fish. Right, we just got dropped off by the helicopter. We've got our first fish right here. Please release me. Let me go. Went up on the hill about twelve o'clock. We tried back and got due to a big landslide, the main river was very silty. Had a lot of water in the side creeks were still running really clear. There was a heap of fish in this pool here. We got onto a few of them. Hooked four, caught three, and we decided to go rafting down to the campsite. Ten metres upstream, he hopped into another fish. We usually camp at this site for the first night because the river was so high and these guys only had two days. We decided to put him here and then raft down to the campsite we usually use on the second night. All fish caught were released. It was very unusual to see the river this colour. The big landslide that happened two weeks prior to the trip pushed the water level seven metres up on the riverbanks before dropping quite quickly the next day. The main river is usually very clear and a nice blue colour, but because of the heavy silt of water, we stopped and had a drink from a couple of side creeks on the way down. It was still running clear. Pretty thirsty work this rafting. We had a couple of swimmers on this trip. This was the only time a whole grab Darren's boat to Rosie and Gina in. Snagged them back pretty quickly. All was good. Due to the river being so high, one of the paddles disappeared downstream, so we're chasing it down. We can see it just ahead of the boat there, about 20 metres in front, and we managed to get it about another 200 metres downstream. It's pretty good rafting at this high flow, really continuous grade 3. Normally this would be grade 2 with a few grade 3 rapids, so it's quite a good family trip this. How's your dinner been? Yeah, it's fantastic, thank you. Very nice. Very good, thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yummy! <laughs> After a delicious meal cooked by the chef, 
that would be me. We managed to get in a quick evening fish. Put a couple more, let them go. This is the side creek at what is normally the second campsite, Tinaihi Creek. It's a beautiful river. There was a heap of fish in this pool as well, as well as upstream. And we tried to get the kids onto a few, but their casting techniques weren't too flash, and we spooked a few of them. Managed to hook another one upstream. That's it, keep the pressure on, dude. Rod to buck, keep the pressure on. That was Robbie's first fish. The face of devastation. Looked like a bit like a stunned mullet when he landed it. Well, he didn't actually land it when he hooked it. <laughs> he forgot to pull the line and put the pressure on, and uh, the fish departed for destinations unknown. Put it out right in the middle of the eddy where that water's all boiling up. After a morning's fishing, we jumped back in the raft, rafted down to the big grade 5 rapid where the guests jumped out and walked around, walked down the bank and me and Darren took the rafts down. <laughs> it was pretty big in there, there was some big holes, some big features, but we managed to get the raft down without mishap. We'd got both the rafts around the big rapid. Everyone jumped back in the one boat and I rode the gear boat down with the camping gear and tents and everything in it. And it was a nice relaxing float down to the takeout. Check out Jared's state-of-the-art helmet cam there. Bit of Aussie ingenuity. Put a bolt through the top of his cap and bolted the camera on top.